This is the Cashflow Digest. My name is Matt Faircloth, and me and the DeRosa team are here for you guys on a weekly basis, video and broadcast recording. This is also live on our Facebook group, DeRosa Insiders. In whatever medium you're watching, please take a minute and like this comment. We're going to be talking about all things real estate and all things cash flow because our company is dedicated to transforming lives through real estate, and cash flow can do that. We're going to be talking about things that are affecting the real estate industry, news in the real estate investing world. We're also going to be bringing on guests that are crushing it in the cash flow sector of real estate investing. If you guys want to join and watch the show live, please go to Facebook and look up to Rosa Insiders and join that Facebook group where we record this show every Friday at noon Eastern. Hope to see you guys there. What is going on? This is Matt Faircloth here coming in at you guys for the Cash Flow Digest. I'm super, super grateful for you guys and parts of our community. I've got a phenomenal guest um, coming at you guys today who bought a town in Texas. We're going to talk about buying a town. How is that possible? I don't know. We're going to find out. Let's go ahead and bring him in. John, John Jasniak. Am I saying that right? That's right, Matt. You got it. Good. John, welcome to the show, man. Thank you so much for being a part of this. I can't wait to dig in. Sure. And thank you so much for, for having me. Um, you know, my name is John Jasnick. I buy and sell land. As you mentioned, that's what I do. A lot of subdividing nowadays started in late 2016, early 2017. So it's been over six years now. Now to tell us about how you bought this town in Texas, right? Take us through this town, how you found it, uh, you know, what it is that you, uh, what it is that we're looking at here, the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, well, it's Cornutus, Texas. It's about an hour east of El Paso in Hudspeth County, Texas. And, um, you know, that's where I started my land career it was uh, deep west Texas, Hudspeth County. And I saw this uh, town come up for sale it would have been early 2022 as a posting on Facebook. And uh, it was blown up on Facebook. It had thousands of likes and views and all that stuff. And um, I saw it. I'm like, man, I would, you know, I've been through here a million times. I've driven by it a million times. I would love to buy this, but it's in the middle of nowhere. How am I going to do this? How am I going to manage it? And so kind of 2022 went by the entire year and I was like December and it was still for sale. And I'm like, man, I was thinking about it the whole time. I'm like, I really want to do this. It's going to be great for branding, great for everything. If I want to be known as Mr. Land or the go-to person in land, like I want to buy a town, like how cool would that be? And so I got real serious about it in December of 2022. And we went out and me and my dad went and visited a property and that was a whole adventure. We, I didn't know if I was going to make it out alive. The owner was like, at one point he threatened to shoot us. I was like, can I go get a sample of the well water? Um, he's like, yeah, you can, but I'll shoot you. And I was like, holy crap. This dude wanted a handshake transaction, quick close, meet at the courthouse. Turns out he was that actually up on kind of thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, man, I'm not going to buy all this. I want to do, you know, full site inspection, the well, um, all the equipment, et cetera. But he, he was not about it. And he, it turns out he was getting foreclosed, um, about to get foreclosed for back taxes. He owed, it was about 85,000 back taxes and uh, attorney fees and all that stuff took it over a hundred thousand. Um, and so he was going to be foreclosed and back taxes. I, I see this so many times, John, and I'm sure you do. This is what I call distress in disguise because rarely, unless somebody's at the complete end of the rope, they likely won't admit a seller will never admit that they're actually in financial distress. Most buying and selling in real estate, it's like a poker game. So he's not showing you that he's got a bank foreclosure in, in his hand. And I don't want, don't want you to know about that, but you found out, did you find out about it before closing? I did. Well, back to your point. I mean, yeah, you always want to come off uh, in a position of strength, obviously. Yeah, and I think I that's, it. you know, and I think part of him was just, you know, he, he, macho, like, oh, you know, I'm getting foreclosed, but, you know, man, I'm who wants to admit that they're going to lose their property or lose, you know, anything of value? I mean, I get you, it. You know, you know, it's, it's, an a, ego it's a balance, though, because it's hard to help people sometimes they don't, if you don't really know what's going on, you know. And I mean, they don't know that there's people like you and me that are, I'm not going to try and like bend them over or take advantage or whatever. I just like yeah. if that's what we got, then let's get real. And how soon do you need to close? Like how far away from the courthouse steps or courthouse steps are we? Right. Um, but anyway, I keep uh, keep going through the taking us through the process uh, yeah. you know, after he told you he's going to shoot you if you test the well water and, and all that. So how did you end up getting him under contract finally and then uh, getting it to closing? Well, I kind of just made the decision in my head. I was like, look, I'm buying this more for the fact that it's a town. Um, there's mm. going to be problems with it, but you know, it's buying a spot on the map. So I was like, okay, we don't need an inspection. Let's do it. And, uh, it was like a, I did a 
finally get him to agree to actually go through a title company and do like lean search, get all that taken care of. It was just a quick 30 day close, straight cash. Um, and we got the lien taken care of the tax lien and, you know, a full title search and insurance policy on it. But I walk into this thing, we end up getting it closed. I think it was the official date on the deed was January 14th or January 12th, uh, 2023. I walk into this thing and that it's been just problem after problem. Uh, if I'm being honest, uh, so far, since I bought it the last four or five months, we've been out there every other week working. Um, me, my dad, uh, a couple other folks, my ops manager, friends, and, uh, you know, my water tank, the, turns out the water tank was leaking. So I just bought a new uh, TCEQ approved water tank for that's 30 grand. Um, you know, there was no HVAC and the electrical was in shambles. Just got a quote for that. Was, that's 80 grand. Uh, bought mattresses for all the, the mobile homes, short term rentals, et cetera. That's five grand. There was a whole problem with the mattresses, had to back and forth, take those uh. back, et cetera. So it's been so far, I think I'm probably about 200,000 into it and just improvements and all that stuff. Can I back uh, up? Just been problem Would you problem. Let's, let's talk because people might not be understanding what we're talking about here, right? So, first of all, yep. this is a when you we say a town. This is, I mean, there's like, you know, it's like, you know, city hall, governor's mansion, you know, yeah. like actual the government of the town, or since you own the town, do you become the government of the town? Are there real estate taxes that get paid? <laughs> I mean, you, you know, what, what, how do you, what, what does it even look like in air quote buying a town or, yeah. or is it just like really a, a bigger piece of real estate when you're paying up to the county? Yeah. Let's paint a picture for people. So this is Hudspeth County, middle of the desert, no restrictions, no zoning nothing like that it's 28 acres on it we got a cafe a six uh room motel six spot rv park three mobile homes a couple outbuildings and a bunch of equipment water well highway frontage etc and uh there's no municipality there's no zoning there's no actual government entities i am the owner i am the mayor so to speak um you know no one really lives out there it's an unincorporated but you're not really the mayor like the this map unincorporated yeah. right that's maybe the word i'm looking for like this is technically uh, a big piece of real estate that you own yes. that has a bunch of different kinds of uses on it right yep. um and and you're lucky enough that you're out in the middle of the desert so the county's not gonna impose anything on you but you likely are paying you as the owner are paying some sort of a pay up to the county for real estate taxes on your entire parcel that you own correct that's 100 percent. yeah um okay got it so you're not collecting real estate taxes. You're collecting rent from whatever's there. Um, are you really the mayor? <laughs> Do you get to call yourself that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have a little no. mayor hat and mayor shirt and a whole nine yards. <laughs> That's great. A, a mayor of a town in Texas ought to be wearing a hat like that. So you bought the town. Can I ask, you pay, what did you pay for the town? I try not to disclose the exact okay. amount, but it was multi six figures. It wasn't it. even a million bucks. Um, okay. W was the, the, the town occupied at the time that you bought it by people? There was... Uh, three people living there. It was just the guy and his mom and basically just family, three or four people. Okay. Okay. And, and it, so then the game is, like you said, it sounds like you're, you're, you talk about short-term rentals, that kind of thing. So you're looking to make this like a touristy fun thing, like a, yes. you know, people to go and check out and like, Hey, I went to this town out in the middle of the desert in Texas kind of thing. I, mean, I get it. That sounds awesome. So there's that, that's your long-term vision for this. Main draw here is um, the cafe. And so people, this is like a major highway. People stop mm -hmm. in, eat food at the cafe, and it's close to Guadalupe Mountain National Park. It's only mm -hmm. 30, 40 minutes away from a national park. All right. And so short-term rental, um, the three mo mobile homes will be short-term rentals, the motel. And so this is like the oasis of the desert, basically. They're famous mm -hmm. for their burgers, Cornutus burgers oh. um, in the past. So we're bringing that back. The cafe should do several hundred thousand per year. Um, just by itself. And then the short-term rentals, I mean, you know, the, the problem here is that we don't have much land, so it's relatively hard to scale. But at the mm -hmm. end of the day, this could be a really um, cool tourist destination. People come yeah. out, stay under the stars, go to the uh, national park and eat at the cafe. So that's kind of the vision for it. <laughs> Show like a movie under the stars every night, you know, driving theater. Was that? A, yeah, that's one of the brainstorms we had was a drive-in movie theater. Why well, would be great? Well, you can't find those anymore. 
you know, um, and that, and, you know, and a city boy like myself from pencil from, you know, out in the middle of like <laughs> super dense Pennsylvania, the idea of staying in an RV out in the middle of the desert and having the, you know, every star, I, you know, more stars than I can count over my head, um, and sitting out in the stars and eating, uh, eating a cheeseburger with my kids sounds like heaven to me, you know, um, and, and that, so that's, that's awesome, man. Well, best of luck to you. Um, to, and what's interesting about this whole thing is there are different plays in every market in the United States. Um, I'm not saying you can't, right? But it, it would be much harder to do what you're doing in some of the markets that I'm familiar with here on the East Coast because they're more dense, right? Um, yes. But because you've got more you know, acreage out where you are out in West Texas, um, and ev everywhere out there, you know, let's talk Arizona, New Mexico, Wyoming, a lot of those Western States on the West side of the Mississippi, um, have more land available. And as I said before, bringing it back to the theme of this cash flow digest show, uh, for today, America needs more housing. We need more places to live, more places to hang out, more places to do stuff. And you can't do all the stuff in lower Manhattan near me. You got to <laughs> spread out a little bit, right? Uh, and America needs to spread out a little bit. And there are markets that we can spread out a little bit, like places that like you've got and the awesome project outside of Odessa Midland that you got going on um, and, uh, and the town that you bought, you know, uh, so really, really great. Like I said, maybe there is a way to make it happen in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, North Carolina, where we do work, but maybe, maybe not. And that's okay. The lesson here uh, for the listeners is to do a, what, what John has done is he's seen the regulations and the needs of the market that he's in, and he's found a way to participate in that market, right? So find a way the the lesson I want you guys to take home today is to find a way to find the needs and the regs and the rules around the market. And don't try and bend the rules or try and push the rules or try and get them changed. Just find a way to meet the market's needs inside the rule box that the government's given you. Um, that's by, my two cents on it. At the end of the day, it's better to find things that are allowed that serve the needs of the market. Tell me real quick, what's next uh, for John Jasniak? About buying the town across the road. What what is? Give me like what your vision for yourself is as as you grow and scale your business. Well, funny enough, there actually was another town for sale about 80, mile, 80 miles away, Lobo, Texas. Um, we went and toured it and it was a complete disaster. And I decided not to make an offer on it just because I got too much stuff going on. But um, for me, I want to build a $100 million land business. What that looks like is $100 million in um, notes receivable and inventory. So basically, it'll be probably $90 million in, in notes receivable, notes that have originated and probably an extra 10 million in land that's in inventory ready to sell. So that's kind of my goal, $100 million land uh, business. Um, I'm not sure it's been done from a pure operating perspective, like going out, buying land. I manage all my own notes. Like I do it all. So building the team and the infrastructure to actually make that happen is a huge chore, a huge project. Something I think yep. about pretty much daily, but that's um, kind of my current goal. So John's big word, guys, is scale, right? Uh, we're looking to Grant Cardone this thing and 10 exit, right? Um, exactly. So, uh, so guys, if you want to reach out to John, if you guys have ideas for scale, or if you want to, uh, you know, I hate this term, but pick his brain, because then, and by the way, if you all call John to pick his brain, you better have something to give him to. Don't be calling people for free advice, okay? <laughs> um, right? Uh, if I find some value you want to bring, if you want to get value, find a just uh, give value if you want to get it, okay? Um, but John, with that in mind, how can folks get a hold of you if they want to hear what you're up to? Buy a plot of land off of you, and or buy a cheeseburger yeah. from your awesome cafe in your town there whatever it is how do folks reach out at john jasniak on all social media and john at john .com. i answer all dms emails etc if you want me to look at a piece of land or a project or whatever i love looking at deals like i would look at them for free and just be like hey this yeah this Sweet. looks great do this i would do this i would do that um i don't know i'm obsessed with just looking at deals that's amazing. Okay. J A S N I A K guys. That's how you get a hold of John Jasniak. Uh, I want to make sure you guys have the spelling right so you guys can get a hold of him yeah. proper. So John, it has been phenomenal having you on the Cash Flow Digest show. Thank you for being with us today. Um, guys, I think we might have to have John back on to hear about the next town that he buys or the next adventure that he's got himself into. This is such a cool niche and I'm, I'm so intrigued by it. Can't wait to hear more. John, thank you so much for being on the show. Guys, that was a phenomenal conversation. It really goes back to the uh, the theme of the show, which is the market is changing. And the, the real estate investors that find a way to 
play into the changing market of real estate are the ones that are going to make a lot of money in the next five to 10 years. That's what happened over the last 10 years. Now for nothing, multifamily became really, really exciting. And a lot of people bought um, C-class value add, B-class value add multifamily over the last 10 years. That's where a lot of money was made in real estate. And it'll continue to be a place that a lot of money gets made. But guess what, guys? We also need new housing. We need new places for people to live. They can still live in B and C-class multifamily that gets resurfaced and revamped and everything like that. But people also need new stuff. So how can you guys, you listener, you listening right now, point at you, how can you play a role in the recreation of new and more housing for America? What's it going to look like, right? Remember, I'll say it one more time. I've said it like 10 times on this show, but I want you guys to really hear me. You cannot change the market. You can only hope to participate in it. So how can you participate in the changing market and the need for new housing in America that we have, right? Uh, think about that. Noodle it. Can't wait to see you guys in the next Cashflow Digest show. Uh, if you guys have uh, tips and tidbits you'd like for me to talk about here, I'm always here for you guys. Just post it uh, on Facebook at uh, DeRosa Insiders, but DeRosa Insiders on Facebook and join that community and leave some comments here. I would love to chat with you directly or would love to answer some questions you guys may have. Just drop it in that community list. If you guys want to hear more about what we offer, DeRosa Group, the education services, uh, the, uh, the 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 um, real estate investments that we offer, or anything that we offer, or new copy of my, the new revised copy of my book, but if you guys would like, go to derosagroup.com. That is D-E-R-O-S-A, derosagroup.com. And you guys can check us out there. Until next time, guys, Friday noon Eastern, every show is live here on this Facebook channel. Until, until next Friday at noon Eastern, we at the DeRosa team, thank you guys for being here with us and wanted to say, have a great and great, awesome weekend. See you then. Hey guys, Matt Faircloth here. Thank you for listening again to the Cash Flow Digest. I really appreciate you guys doing that. If you guys want to hear more about what DeRosa Group has to offer, go to DeRosa Group, D E R O S A Group.com, DeRosa Group.com online. You can hear about all the great things that we offer from an educational standpoint and passive investment standpoint on our website. See you there. And if you guys want to join our online community, DeRosa Insiders on Facebook, where you can watch this program get recorded every Friday at noon Eastern, and you can come on as even a guest or ask questions on the show. We hope to see you guys on our online community, DeRosa Insiders. See you there.